Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, one of the last topics we are going to do in hypothesis testing is what are called goodness of fit tests. Okay? So, we have seen so many problems particularly in parameter estimation where a, a set of data samples are given and you want to fit it to a particular distribution. You, you want to or maybe a frequency table is given, some, some data is given and you want to fit it to a particular distribution. right? So you, so, you want to imagine, uh, you know, maybe the distribution is Poisson, I, I do a fit, I find a lambda and then I see if my actual expected samples are close enough to the observed samples. We, we have done this quite often, right? We did a gamma fit before, we did a histogram and we saw if the actual uh, density fits the histogram, etc. We saw all this. Uh, but, you know, so far we have just visually inspected the expected versus observed and seen if it is a good fit or not, right? We have not actually gone further to look at uh, the goodness of the fit turns out there is a statistical process uh, to find goodness of fit and it is very related to hypothesis testing. Uh, in fact, uh, there is something called a chi-square test which is what we will see in this lecture. Okay. So, how do you assess goodness of fit? Here is a, a typical parameter estimation problem, right? So, you expect that uh, you know the distribution of grades in a class from S, A, B, C, D, E, U is going to have this distribution. There is a parameter p in the distribution, uh, the number of people who get c, the fraction of people who get c, the probability of someone getting a c is 1 minus p and then for b is p by 2, uh, d is p by 8, e is p by 16, p, u is p by 32, uh, a is p by 4, p by 32. So, so it is sort of like we are expecting people to have different grades and uh, in, in one particular class, uh, I believe there are 810 students in this class. Uh, total is 810, okay. Out of 810 students who went through for grading, uh, 397 got C, 203 got B, 55 got D, so on, okay. So, you observed this. So, from this observation, we know how to go ahead and find P, okay. In fact, we can do an ML estimate uh, for P, you know, that the likelihood is proportional to 1 minus P power 397 times P power 413 and from there you can solve for the op the ML estimate for P and that comes out to be 0.51, okay. So, it seems uh, like a reasonable thing to do, we know that this works. Now, the question is how good a fit is this to the observed data, right. So, what is the expected count of grades, okay. If P hat ML were 0.51, the number of S's, what is this number? This number should be, uh, you know, 0 0.51 by 32 times 810. The expected number of S's should be this. So, this number will be uh, 0 0.51 by 4 times 810 and so on, right. So, this last number will also be, you know, 0 0.51 by 32 times 810. As per that expectation, I mean, as I have estimated my P, I know the expected distribution and from there I can find the expected value. So, this is the count and that is observed. So, you see the observed numbers are 15 for S and the expected number is 12.9 as per my fit. The observed number is 97, the expected number is 103.2, 203, 206.6, 397, 396. So, so these are the numbers I am getting. The question is, is this a good enough fit? Maybe you want some statistical analysis method, some p-value, maybe some significance level, maybe to come up with a test to see if this is a reasonable fit or not, right? This is a typical uh, statistical problem, okay? So, it turns out, if you were to ask a question like, is the above a good enough fit? there is an answer and that answer typically one way of answering it is to use something called the chi-squared, chi-square, chi-squared uh, goodness of fit test, okay. So, how does this work? I will first describe this test in a, in, in a general situation and then apply it in the grade situation and show you how it works, okay. And then we will see a couple of modifications of this test, okay. So, the chi-squared uh, goodness of fit test, uh, you have a random variable x, it takes it is discrete, okay. So, the first thing we are assuming is this is a discrete random variable, okay. So, it is discrete. We will we'll see how to deal with continuous a little bit later, but this is a discrete random variable. It takes k values a1 through ak. I am calling it a1 through ak. This is just to keep it general. It, it may be different. In the previous case, we saw, you know, if we are look looking at grades, it took seven different values s, a, b, c, like, like that. This is a1 through ak. Uh, probability that x equals a i is p i. So, this is again a general distribution. So, in the previous case, we had some specific values uh, for the probability. In this case, we have a general situation, okay. It may be that p i is parameterized and you have to find p i from data. That is a different issue, but uh, in general, we start with this point. This is a starting point for goodness of fit test, 
okay. And then we take n samples and do this observed versus expected count, okay. So the data, I mean the possible values are a1, a2 through ak, okay. The observed values, actually what you saw, the observed counts, right, so this is the possible values for ak. The observed count, number of a1 in the sample end up, end up being uh, this, okay. So for instance, yk is the number of ak in n samples like that, okay. So, y1 will be, you know, number of a1 in n samples, simple stuff, I am just writing it down, okay. Below, I write expected value. So, n times p1, you can see is clearly the number of a1s I expect in uh, n samples, right. So, n as per the distribution, the distribution is given to you, n p1, n p2, n p k, y's are the actual counts, observed counts, expected counts are below, okay. Now, I can have a null hypothesis which says the samples are iid according to s, x, this distribution. The alternative is samples are not iid x, okay. So you see you have a simple null and a composite alternative and we can try and think of coming up with a test statistic and deciding whether or not this is true. So a typical hypothesis testing problem. So it turns out the test statistic of interest here is some sort of a chi-squared statistic. How do you do it? Uh, we will call it t, you sum up over i equals 1 to k this number, you know, this fraction. The numerator you have yi minus npi squared, okay. So you would do, you know, in this case, you know, if you want to write it down, it will be y1 minus np1 squared by np1 plus y2 minus np2 squared by np2 plus so on, right. So that is the summation. It turns out this statistic, the distribution of the statistic is approximately chi squared k minus 1, okay. Remember the chi squared distribution, right? I have shown you some plots of that. It is chi squared with k minus 1 degrees of freedom, okay. So this k minus 1, so it is chi squared with k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So this degree of freedom is of, of, often, I mean, abbreviated as DOF, so that is the thing. And so, so generally, if the fit is very good, you expect this t to be small, right? You can see clearly, you know, yi will be close to npi, I am squaring it, dividing by npi, normalizing, etc. So I expect if the fit were to be really, really good, then t will be, you know, close to 0, very small, right? Positive, of course, but close to 0, okay? So a very reasonable test is to reject the null hypothesis if t is above some critical value c, okay? So based on this, and based on the chi-square approximation, you can quickly derive a significance level which is probability that t is greater than c given h0 and that will be 1 minus f chi-squared k minus 1 evaluated at the uh, critical value and this is just the CDF, right, CDF of chi-squared k minus 1, okay. So this is the chi-squared goodness of fit test. It is very typical simple test. Uh, may not be the greatest of things, but it is commonly used and it, you can quickly evaluate uh, the goodness of a fit using the chi-squared uh, goodness of fit test, okay. So notice the test statistic again, uh, we have not seen any proof for why this is chi-squared k minus 1, it is a little bit advanced, uses some linear algebra ideas. Uh, I will leave you to look it up if you are interested, uh, but this is an important uh, result, okay. So once again, you see why, you know, these things are important, probability, linear algebra, all of these things form the basis of most such results. Of course, you can use the goodness of fit test without understanding the proof, but you know, in some other situation when it fails, you won't know why it failed, right? So only when you know the proof, you'll know maybe this approximation didn't work in this case, right? So you can go and look at it and do all that if you know the proof, okay? Of course, that's if you are interested in that, okay? So that's the chi-square goodness of fit test. Let's see how it applies for our grades data, okay? In this grades data, we have 810 samples and k equals 7. So notice n and k are the only things that play a role there, 810 k equals 7. Uh, we have the observed count and the expected count. I, I put it out separately in two tables in the previous slide. I have put it together to show you how it works. And then so the chi-squared test has degree of freedom k minus 1, 6. So we can pick uh, alpha equals 0 0.05 and then find the critical value just like before, uh, but instead we'll use the chi-squared 6 distribution. So f inverse chi-squared 6, 1 minus 0 0.05, that's the critical value that works out to 12.59.
Okay, so that's the number and then we go ahead and calculate the actual test statistic for this data. Uh, you can see how I've done t equals you know, 15 minus 12.9 squared by 12.9 and so on. Added up everything, you do that, you'll get uh, 3.66. So now we see that the value of t is uh, lesser than the critical value. So we accept the fit. Now instead of critical value, if you want to find the p-value, you will get uh, 1 minus f chi squared 6 of 3.66 and that will work out to something larger than 0 0.05, something greater than 0 0.05. So we see that the p-value is larger and uh, the test statistic is smaller than the critical value and we ended up accepting the fit. You can do a similar calculation uh, whenever you want to, of course, for any other situation. And this is how a typical chi-square test with uh, data is run. So that's the simple application in grades data. We'll see small modifications to this uh, in the next few lectures, but hopefully this lecture uh, is, is clear enough. It's a simple test. We didn't see full proofs, but you know, at least the method should be easy enough to use. Thank you very much.